everyone, this is Dr. Anita Nag. I am an assistant professor of chemistry and my special area is biochemistry. In my lab, we study how viral proteins interact with host proteins and how this interaction can disrupt normal activity in the host cell. For this, we chose a non-structural protein one, a special protein from coronaviruses. And we chose this protein because this only appears in mammalian coronaviruses that are shown here, alpha and beta coronaviruses, but they do, this protein does not appear in other genera of coronaviruses, gamma and delta, that infects birds and reptiles. Specifically, we are interested in this protein in the zoonotic coronaviruses, uh, such as SARS coronavirus 2, which is responsible for the current pandemic. Now, this protein is unique um, because it's a small protein, it's structurally very flexible, and this protein is non-structural protein. That means it doesn't come with the virus itself. It's not part of the viral shell, but once the virus infects the cell and releases its genomic material, which is RNA in this case, then this non-structural protein is produced. And as I said earlier, this is a very small protein and is structurally very flexible as shown right here. That poses a challenge that we cannot really draw structure-function relationship just by looking at the protein structure. So to understand this protein even more, we want to understand how it communicates with cellular proteins. So to give you some overview of how this protein works and what we understand thus far is NSP1 binds to um, ribosome. Ribosome is the machinery responsible for protein synthesis in our cells from host messenger RNAs. And since it disrupts ribosome assembly in the host cell, host protein synthesis is blocked. Not only that, NSP1 also triggers cleavage of host messenger RNA so that there is no more messenger RNA template left for the cell to carry out protein synthesis. Therefore, gene expression is blocked in the host cell. Now, surprisingly, this protein also interacts with the viral RNA. However, it spares the viral RNA from going through cleavage and degradation. So imagine a situation where NSP1 is present in the cell and you have both viral proteins, viral RNA and host mRNA. It only degrades host mRNA but keeps the viral RNA protected so that viral RNA can undergo protein synthesis and can take over the cell's regular activities. To understand this, we study how NSP1 interacts with the ribosome and other cellular proteins involved in translation. And we also study how NSP1 interacts with host mRNA and the viral mRNA to understand how this protein can distinguish between the viral factors and the host factors. If you want to learn more about my research, please contact me at this email address, or you can talk to any of my um, students in the lab. Uh, the current members are Allison, um, Caitlin, and Yevgeny, and they will be happy to talk to you um, if you have any question about how um, we work in the lab. Thank you, and please email me if you are interested.